All right, guys, this is the second half. So let's take a look at some of these absolute value functions. And we're just going to use our vertex form to figure out what they are. So instead of using a table, we're just gonna use our shortcuts. Okay, so our vertex is HK. Well, this is H and this is K. So remember our vertex form is X minus H plus K. So X minus H, well this is X plus one, which is really the same as X minus a negative one. So if we wanna say X minus H, what's H? H is this right here, negative one. Plus K. Well, to get negative two, we have to add negative two like that, right? Because this is the same as plus negative two. So basically you have to write it in this form. You have to write it in this exact form and then figure out what values fall into that. So our H is negative one and our K is negative two. And our slope of this line of the one line is two, so the other line is negative two. So we just graph this, negative one, negative two. And then we have a slope of two. Up two over one. There you go. All right. Vertex form of this one. So this one has a vertex of H, K. So again, X minus H plus K. So X minus, X minus six. So our H is six. And our K, there's nothing there, which means it's zero. So that's our vertex. Now here's the tricky one, okay? What's the slope of the line on the right? Well, A, a that's in front of that is actually a negative one. A is a negative one, right? That's what number is in front of the absolute values here. So the slope of our line on the right hand side is gonna be a negative one slope. And the slope of our line on the left side is gonna be the opposite of that, which is a positive one slope. Okay, so let's graph our vertex. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna go a negative one slope. Down one, over one, down one, over one. Because remember, A is the slope on the right side, and then the opposite of that is the slope on the left side. All right, now the slope on the left side would be up one over one, but remember, we don't, we don't want above the vertex. So we go to negative and negative, left and down, left and down. And that makes sense, we know that. We know that if you have a negative number in front of our absolute values, that we're going to have a negative, or our, our absolute value function is gonna be flipped. We know that. So it shouldn't be super surprising that our slope is a negative one. You would expect already that it can look like that. All right, let's take a look at this one. H is negative one and K is negative one. So our vertex is at negative one, negative one. Right here. This is opening up because this is a positive A. A is two thirds. Oh no, it's a fraction. <laughs> Guess what? Fractions for slope are really easy, right? Up two, over three. Up two, over three. Up two, over three, right? We go in the opposite direction. We just mirror them. I mean, you could work out the actual slope. Oop, that's only over two. You know, you can make sure you have the negative slope and all of that. But really, these are just mirrored points. They're reflected across our line of symmetry, which is at the vertex. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Now let's just look at it to make sure we understand. If we look at it right here, it's got a negative in front of the slope, which means we know it's gonna open down. 
so we don't even have to think about which way to, to graph our lines right now. We just know it opens down. Okay, h, well, x minus, well, there's nothing in there with x, so that's x minus 0. k equals 7. So our vertex is at 0, 7. Okay, we know it opens down, and we know the slope of our right side is negative 3 fourths, and the slope of our left side is 3 fourths. So we go down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 4. Okay, and then we just mirror those on this other side. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, that's a positive slope going that way, right? We know that. We can just see that. It's always good to check yourself when you graph something and say, does that make sense? My left side should have a positive 3 fourths slope, and my right side should have a negative 3 fourths slope. And look at it. Decide, does that have a positive slope? Does that have a negative slope? Okay. All right, now let's get into these piecewise functions because I know they scare you a little bit. So this is what you do. Graph each function, decide what you're going to keep, decide what you're not going to keep. Okay, so let's graph the absolute value function first. So that's really f of x equals negative 3 absolute value of x plus 3. Okay, so for this one, our h is equal to negative 3 and our k is equal to 0 because x minus negative 3 is x minus h and there's nothing over here, so that's our k. So our vertex is at negative 3, 0. Okay, and then it has a slope of negative 3, which means it's opening down. So down 1, 2, 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3 over 1, All right, so this is what we have. Now we're going to keep what we don't, what we want, which is everything for x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So we come here to negative 1. We just want to keep everything in our graph that's greater than or equal to, yeah, for every x that's greater than or equal to negative 1, we want to keep this part of the graph. Put a little closed circle there because we're keeping everything. And then all of our hard work, we erase. Okay, now let's graph the line. Lines are easy. Y equals 4x plus 2. This is, has a y-intercept of positive 2 and a slope of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. Over 1. Okay, once you have three points, you can graph this line. And again, we're going to keep everything that we don't want, or we're going to cover up everything we don't want, and don't just keep, this says, for all x that are less than negative 1, we're going to keep this function. So for all x that are less than negative 1, we're going to keep this function. And that one's going to be an open circle, because we don't want to keep negative 1, but we want to keep everything else. So that funny looking function right there, that's it. That's our piecewise. All right, let's take a look at this one. We're going to graph. Let's graph the, abs graph the absolute value first because it makes us the most scared. So our vertex is at h, k, which is negative 1, 5. That's h and k. We know it opens down. So we're going to graph negative 1, 5. We know it opens down with a negative 1 slope, 
is a is negative 1. Okay, so there's our absolute value function. Now what we're saying here is if x is less than or equal to negative 4, we want to keep this function. For all x that are less than or equal to negative 4, we want this function. So we're going to come over here to negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, And we are going to keep this function for everything less than that number and equal to that number but nothing more. So then we're just gonna erase all of our hard work right there. Okay, now we wanna keep y, remember this is f of x equals three, that's just y equals three. Well, you know how to graph that, it's a, it's a horizontal line, right? Right here at y equals three. Okay, we want to keep that from all values in between negative 4 and 2. So that says I want this function for all values that are in between negative 4 and 2. So I come here at negative 4, I want from here over to 2. I want this piece of the function and nothing else. So we're going to graph that. And this, has, this one is going to have open circles on either side because we said we want right up to negative 4, but we don't want to include negative 4, and right up to negative 2, but we don't want to include negative 2. So then we erase what we don't need. All right, now our final piece is just a line, y equals negative x plus 7. We just graph this line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's our y-intercept. And it has a negative 1 slope. Okay. And we're going to keep that from x equals 2 and higher. So everything bigger than x equals 2. So at x equals 2 and higher, we want to keep that function. So we're going to do a closed circle because we want to include 2 in that. And we're going to go that way and erase what we don't need. So there is your scary, big scary piecewise function, not so scary anymore. All right. These are absolute value inequalities. Remember, there's, they're no different. You just graph the absolute value and then decide where to shade. So first, let's figure out h and k. Well, x minus negative 4 plus negative 6, that's written, these are the same thing, right? x minus negative 4 is the same as x plus 4. So now we can find h and k. So our h is negative 4, negative 6. So we graph that, that's our vertex. And then the slope of this line is a 1 over 1. One up and over. So we graph this one, and then we just have to decide where to shade. Okay, this is where it's tricky. I always pick a test point, and my test point is always zero, zero. It is so easy to use zero, zero. So I plug in zero for x, and I plug in zero for y, I say if x and y are both 0, if I'm at this point right here, will my inequality be true? So I say 0, 0, or 0 is less than 0 plus 4, the absolute value of 0 plus 4, minus 6. So then I solve this, 0 plus 4 is 4, absolute value of 4 is still 4, 0 is less than or equal to 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. Is that true? No, 0 is never less than negative 2, which means 0, 0 is not part of my function. So this point does not make my inequality true. So 
anything on this side of my equation won't make my inequality true because if zero, zero doesn't make it true, none of these will make it true. So I shade over here. All right, last but not least, let's take a look at this one. H, x minus h plus k. So our h is 5, our k is 4. The vertex of this one is at 5, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? And this one has a slope of negative 2, right? Which means this one's going to have a negative 2 slope and this one's going to have a positive 2 slope. Or you can just think about it, this one, it faces down with a slope of 2. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Okay. All right, so there's our absolute value function. Now all we have to do is figure out where we're going to shade, right? We want to figure out which values make this inequality true and which make them false. So is it going to be here or is it going to be inside? either on the outside of the inequality or outside of the absolute value function or the inside is going to make it true. So again, we're going to plug in 0 for x and 0 for y. That's our point. We're going to say at this point, is this inequality true? So 0 is greater than negative 2 times 0 minus 5 plus 4. 0 is greater than negative 2. That's the absolute value of negative 5 plus 4. Well, the absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5, so 0 is greater than negative 2 times 5 plus 4. So 0 is greater than negative 10 plus 4, which 0 is greater than negative 6. Hey, is that true? Is 0 greater than negative 6? Yeah, it's always greater than negative 6. So that means if I put in 0, 0, then this inequality is true. So that's the part of the the graph that I want to keep because all of these points here will make this inequality true. You could test more points if you wanted, but once you've tested one point, you know that they're all true. So there you go. That is vertex form of absolute values. We've com combined it with piecewise and inequalities, and hopefully that gives you a little bit shorter, quicker way to do this.